Hi, it's Rachel from Team Forget Me Nots. Today's makeover is of two chests of drawers. This was a commission piece where the customer had two different chests of drawers and wanted to make them a bedroom set. And these drawers had been in the family for up to 20 years. So how do you make a set out of mismatched furniture? You can go a long way to making it look good with the same paint and handles. I started by cleaning the piece with white lightning, which are granules that you dilute in warm water. I'll link all the products listed below. I sanded the drawers in different ways because I was a bit more careful with the one with veneer because I didn't want to make a hole in it. So I sanded the taller drawers by hand with 180 grit sandpaper. And the most important thing was just to rough up the surface so that the paint would have something to grip to. For the solid wood drawers I used my orbital sander. There was quite a few more dings and dents in these drawers but the goal wasn't to make them look brand new, just to make them a bit cleaner. And a tip on how to open your drawers after you've removed the handles is to put a zip tie through one of the holes and then you can still pull them out quite easily. I used plastic wood for the first time, which is a wood filler, and I'll be honest, I mostly chose this because it was pink and I thought it would be fun, but when it's wet, it's pink, but then after you put it on, it dries a natural colour, so it wasn't going to cause me issues with the colour of the paint on top. Because the customer had chosen single handles for both pieces, I had to fill in one hole on each handle on the taller set of drawers. I needed a couple of coats of the plastic wood just to make sure that it was even. I did one coat of primer just over the knots in the wood so that when I painted there would be a flat even colour throughout. The customer initially requested the same colour of the chest of drawers that I did in this makeover, linked in the card above, but that was a discontinued colour and I didn't have any more of the paint. So the closest match I found was Oyster which is a very light grey white colour. I used a synthetic brush on the edges and the ridges of the wood and then went over with a roller on the flatter surfaces. I did two or three coats of Oyster in total. If you're enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It makes a huge difference to smaller channels like mine. After the primer and each coat of paint, I lightly sanded it back with a high grit sandpaper just to take away the little bumps and bits of fluff that inevitably appear in paint. And on to the fun and challenging bits. The customer had requested I create a rainbow across the two pieces. I hadn't created a rainbow before, so it was going to be a bit of trial and error. I knew I needed to create the semicircle. Often people do this by attaching some string to a nail or a screw, but I didn't want to attach anything to the drawers, especially because I had already finished painting them. So I tied a piece of string to a lollipop stick and inserted it under the bottom of both drawers. I then put a piece of chalk on the end of the string for what I would be drawing the lines with. I chose chalk so I'd be able to remove it easily with wet wipes rather than pencil which I thought might be harder to remove. I made the string as long as the tallest rainbow arch would be and I used my other finger as a pivot point for where I wanted the arch to start. After I'd done the chalk outline I went in with fog tape to create the outline so I'd be able to paint over it. It was never going to be a perfect circle by using fog tape with straight lines. So I knew I'd be going in later to touch up the lines, but it was good for the base shape to start from. I measured the bands of the rainbow and the gaps in between with a tape measure as I went along to make sure that they were evenly spaced. The customer requested cactus, which is an olive green colour for the bottom smallest part of the rainbow, with then two lighter versions of the cactus colour for the larger arches. Spoiler alert, this is not how it finished up, but that was the plan initially. For the main part of the rainbow arches, I used a sponge dabber to put the paint on which worked perfectly well with the frog tape, and for over the edges of the drawers I used a small detail brush. So even though the rainbow wasn't finished and was imperfect, the customer could already tell that they weren't really happy with the colour and wanted it to be brighter and more vibrant, as befitting a set of drawers for a children's bedroom. So for the base colour, this time I changed to Palmetto, which is a foresty green kind of colour, and that would be the darkest arch at the bottom. And for the two larger arches, I mixed it with Tide Pool, which is a light, sort of sea foamy, greeny blue. It probably actually helped to have the original arches there, because it meant I was able to tweak the shape where it wasn't quite right, or make an arch slightly more curved as it needed to be which was easier to tell from the colour of the paint rather than the shape of the frog tape. The 
before and after with the cactus green and the palmetto green is quite funny to me. It almost looks like it's having television in black and white and then transforming into colour. The greens we went with in the end are really bright and lovely. So while Oyster is a silk paint, therefore it has a built-in top coat, if you ever want to do more than one coat of sealer, it's actually advisable to do another sealer on top anyway. And I tend to do a couple of coats of sealer just to reassure me. So I went with Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin, which will give it a slight sheen and a good amount of protection. Because it would be in a children's bedroom, it was important to make sure it was as well protected as possible. And I did two coats of this sealer and applied it with my new favourite blue sponge, which is just brilliant for applying a top coat. It just doesn't leave any brush strokes and it's so smooth and lovely to use. So nearly finished, I then replaced the two broken runners that just had splits in them and were making the drawers drop down too much. And then attached the new handles, which were a lovely natural wood colour, which are really simple but look beautiful against the white and the green rainbows, and set it off perfectly. And here they are, the finished pieces finally set next to each other. So what do you think? Can you create a set out of mismatched furniture? I think they look lovely together. The greens are so bright and fresh and a bit of fun for what was otherwise mismatched and normal looking furniture. And bonus points, you'll always know if you've got your drawers in the right place. I hope you enjoyed this transformation. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing or watching another of the videos in the playlist. Or find out more about this makeover at teaandforgetmenots.com. Thanks for watching, until next time, bye!